All right, guys. So, uh, this is what I'm up to today. Um, I bought a can of some Plasti Dip, and um, I'm gonna make an attempt to clean it up a little bit. Just get some of the really deep scratches out of this paint. Out of the, it's actually in the plastic. You might be able to see that. I don't know if you can or not. Camera isn't helping me out here, so. But they're plainly visible to the naked eye. I mean, they're, it's pretty bad. Whoever sanded this, sanded it with way too uh, low of a grit sandpaper. So I thought, <clears throat> um, you know, physically speaking, it's a good piece. So I'm just gonna clean it up and um, plastic dip it and put it on the bike until uh, I get the carbon fiber piece, the carbon fiber lid, tank cover, and um, yeah, I think that'll help. It'll help me feel less self-conscious about it because <laughs> I don't know why, but those scratches really bother me. They look just so bad, so, so bad. Um, for any of you who've, pla I've never plastic dipped before. And uh, I know you can put it over quite a bit. I just wasn't confident that it was going to cover some of those scratches. I mean, they're pretty deep. I mean, you can feel them with your finger. So um, I'm, I'm not going to really do much more here. I know maybe I should, but um, I just don't know how much effort I want to put into this. Given that I'm not going to keep it, I'm going to end up selling it on eBay for cheap. Um, so if you have a Buell and you are looking for a tank cover, there will be a plastic dipped one for sale soon, about a month or two. But I'll just put it up on eBay or something. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. So that's going to be the video today. I thought I would include you guys on the wet sanding bit. Um, it's gonna be pretty boring to watch. I'll try and uh, make it interesting, as interesting as I can. But as you can see, so far, I've only been wet sanding for about 10 minutes. Um, you can already see the, the scratches appearing from the glazing, filling in those uh, deep canyons that were gouged into the plastic. So um, I'm just gonna keep going at it and um, eventually we'll get there. Um, think about wet sanding, just keep, a, keep water with you. Uh, you can use a bucket, bucket with some soap in it, um, bucket with just water, spray bottle with soap in it, or spray bottle with water, which is what this is. This is uh, 800 grit, wet dry, and um, I figure that's just abrasive enough to get into the, just take some of those high spots out and um, help smooth out this before I put plastic dip on it. So, anyways, yeah, just just keep spraying and uh, make sure your paper's wet too. And the reason you wet sand is to keep the paper from clogging up, right? Because when that happens, you can get you can get some channels built into the the paint you're working on. Now this piece is uh, condition, that doesn't matter a whole lot. I'm just trying to reduce what's there um, to the point where it's not so plain obvious whenever I spray it with plastic dip. And then the plastic dip I got is also flat black. And um, so I think that'll help somewhat in hiding the uh, the flaws in the paint, so anyhow, um, yeah, this is great, right? Aren't you glad you're watching this? It's so fun, just a blast, <laughs> you bunch of voyeurs, I say a bunch, there's all of like 20 of you out there watching this, <laughs> if, if that, but anyhow. Maybe one of you needs some help learning how to wet sand. And I'm not a pro. Uh, I just did, you know, 
my own stuff for years and um, watched videos just like this. There are much, much, much better videos out there for learning how to wet sand and do body work. I'm, I'm not that guy, right? I'm just trying to get this thing ready for, for a quick shot of some plastic dip. And I sure as heck hope the plastic dip works out, you know? I hope that's not a waste of time doing that. And I guess, you know, wasting the can of paint too. Um, wasting money on it, I should say. But you know what? Uh, given that we're all, we're all still kind of under quarantine. Of course, Texas is a little bit more lenient um, right now. The governor of the state of Texas has uh, um, alleviated some of the restrictions placed on businesses. So um, we're still asked to pr uh, do social distancing and the limit how much we go out. Um, so it's not that I'd be doing anything better really, you know? This is my hobby. This is what I like to do. Um, some people go shopping. I wet sand. <laughs> That's lame. Anyways, some people paint, like, you know, real paintings. Not me, I wet sand. Um, so anyhow, we're getting close. Um, as soon as I get where I feel okay about what I'm looking at and how I feel, like what my hands are feeling as I rub across the paint. And that's really what it's about, is how it feels. And you can, I don't know if you can hear that, how the, how the sandpaper will suddenly take a different tone. Like, you hear that? And suddenly it gets quieter. That's what wet sanding does. It takes off a lot of the higher layers and rough spots in the paint. And you're left with a much smoother paint surface. And um, the result, uh, if you really go at this, you know, if I, if I wanted to have a show car, um, I wouldn't be going this, this fast. I'd, I'd be really taking my time or pay a pro or a show bike, I should say, not a show car. This is a bike. Um, I'd really be taking my time and going through all the grits and glazing and regrate glazing and putting down uh, primer sander and wet sanding the primer sand uh, the primer filler sorry not primer sander primer filler until you know it was as smooth as I could make it and then I'd clean that off and put down my base coat and then the clear coat, but we are not doing that because we're just buying time until the carbon fiber shows up and then I don't have to do anything. Um, I just bolt it on, which I'm stoked about. So I'm not really gonna worry about this because um, you don't see it. So yeah. We're close, man. We're about 95% of the way there, I think. Um, really just depends on, like I said, not the look so much, just the feel. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of the high spots so that the low spots aren't so apparent. And you see how I'm swirling? That's a no-no, don't do that. I'm just doing it because I'm trying to get through this faster. You really should be going in a nice, smooth, linear movement, like, like, kind of like what I'm doing. Maybe more like this speed, light pressure, taking your time. But I don't care. I just want this to get done, so I can put some plastic dip on there. And like I said, that stuff's pretty thick, at least what I can tell. And uh, it should cover up a lot of these blemishes anyway. So. Someone once asked me why Americans repeat themselves so much. And uh, another American said, it's because you're not listening. <laughs> and I catch myself now that someone brought that to my attention that we Americans tend to repeat ourselves a lot. Now I hear myself repeating myself 
a lot, like I just did. You know the answer to that, why we do that as Americans. Make sure you comment down below. Also, if uh, you know a good video that I should watch about wet sanding or plasti dip, make sure you let me know in the comments below or a good resource that I need to know about, a good product that I need to know about. Let me know about it in the comment in the comment section. Because I'm always interested in learning. I have this thing. Um, it's an acronym, ABL. It's really not an acronym, it's just three missions. Always be learning. Um, even if you're learning something that might be really mundane, anytime you can enrich your mind, you inevitably will enrich your life. As you gain a skill that you didn't have before maybe or you learn something that you can share with someone else and uh, inevitably help them and enrich their lives so no this isn't a plug for Skillshare <laughs> um, I believe that uh, you get as much learning on your own as you can because your your mind is free to learn what it wants to learn of course, if that means going to Skillshare or some other company like that to get your learning, that's totally fine. I'm not dissing on Skillshare at all. I think that's great. I don't use it, but I know lots of people do, and they love it, and that's good. I feel like this is like an episode of like this old cabin or something, you know? You guys are just listening to me jive, talk y'all, and uh... <laughs> it's kind of funny. I just feel like an old man all of a sudden. Well, back in my day, we didn't have wood sanding. We used to use bricks. Um, I'm sure all the body guys that are watching, if there are any watching this, are like, Oh my gosh, you're an idiot. You're doing it wrong. Yes. I know. I know. Look at that piece of grass. There's another one there. That's how detail oriented we're being here. All right, guys, I think based on what I'm seeing, we are really, if we're not there, we are so close. So, so close. So, I'm going to go a little bit more right here. I can see here there's some stuff I want to get. Um, and then. Yeah, right here, right here in this spot. And get a little bit more right here, and then I think I'm done. And then we'll rinse this off and let it dry, and then get the Plasti Dip ready and rock and roll. Oh yeah, also be prepared to kind of get dirty. That's paint. Good thing is it washes right off. Did you guys hear the sandpaper get quieter all of a sudden? That rough spot I had spotted, it's right there. There's some more. There it goes. Smooth. Now we're getting the paint, the old paint, or body color, plastic starting to show through. So I'm, I'm burning through some of this. Um, rattle can stuff that was on here. I don't care. Um, oh yeah, that's way better. Way, way, way better. Okay, good. So, that looks good. Don't trust your eyes so much as your touch, sense of touch. Yeah, right here, so I need to do some more right here in this little spot. Not a lot, but there was something there that I felt. Um, you should use a sanding block too. Um, they have soft ones and hard ones. Um, your fingers can end up putting, you know, uneven pressure. Well, they do. They put uneven pressure on the uh, surface as you're sanding. 
that's on it's not an ideal situation to be in um, but in this case as I keep saying it doesn't matter so there's a pretty good gouge right there I'm not getting but the seat does come up to this spot so I think it'll be okay and again the plastic dip should cover I know as you're looking at it, you're thinking, my gosh, it looks like crap. Well, that's true. It does look like crap. But it feels really good. And uh, and if, if we were going to go full chooch on this and do this right, we'd just keep going and keep adding glaze and keep, keep uh, sanding and keep going over and over and over again until it was like glass. And it looked, I'm telling you right now, the way this feels right now is, man, nothing like what it used to feel like. So um, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to pause the camera, go rinse this off, and when we come back, um, I have some cardboard laid out, and we're going to rattle can this. I'm not going to tape off the Buell stuff. Um, like I said, this is just quick and dirty, and given that it's plastic dip, you can peel it right off. Whoever buys this thing from me can peel it right off and, and they can go through and do it up the way they want to. Um, on top of that, the letters aren't in that good a shape. Um, whoever painted it before didn't do, didn't tape off everything completely. So you can see the letter L has some black kind of covering it. And then the E here also has some black. And I guess if you really, really worked at it, you could get that off and it'd be fine. But we're not gonna do that. That's somebody else's problem, right? Do you know there's a spot in your brain called other people's problem? It's true, everybody has it. It's a spot in your brain you push things to that you don't wanna care about. And you don't, you just don't care about it. Everybody has it. All right, hopefully this video isn't one of those. Oh. Anyways, all right. I'll come back in a little bit. All right, guys, we're back. Um, everything's dried off, cleaned off. Um, obviously, the underside's a little bit dirtier, but I don't think that matters too much. I was reading the directions, and, and uh, according to Duplicolor, which is I mean, a custom wrap, removable coating. So I talk about generic, you know. Um, Anyways, uh, according to them, I don't have to sand like I did, but oh my gosh, this thing is on there. I'll be back. Got it. Anyways, according to them, um, I didn't have to go through everything, they just wanted a clean, clean, dry surface, and uh, we we're clean and dry mostly. So, just gonna do a quick coat around the bottom to get the edge, and then flip it over and start going and uh, rock and roll. So, got the cardboard out so I don't paint my grass, not like it would matter. Um, but here we go. Oh, it goes on thick. We'll let that dry for a few and then come back. Oh, it smells really good. If you like chemical smells, and I do, I'm not a huffer. Don't get any ideas. But we'll come back whenever that's uh, dried off. All right, we're back. So we're just gonna lie, uh, put a little light coat on it. This stuff is different. And we're gonna let that tack over and then come back and then uh, put a real coat on it. So 
So we're gonna wait about five minutes, come back and uh, put some more on. Oh, missed a spot. All right, time for a medium coat. Those uh, deep lines are disappearing already. So I think my plan's working. Hey. You know, the problem with painting outside is bugs dust and grass but it is what it is we'll deal with it so wait about five minutes for that to tack and then uh, keep going I think I'm gonna add four more three more coats I guess three or four whatever depends on what it looks like okay let's add some more coats So I'm going thicker this time. Hope I'm not making a mistake. A few spots right there. Feels like it's splattering a little bit. Like I said, painting outside has some serious drawbacks. But I can't paint the garage because the fumes uh, get to the kids. And um, I don't want to get any of this stuff on my car. And I don't want to pull my car out. So I'm all together being really lazy all right so we'll let that tack and we'll add one or two more co coats all right guys and, uh, i think this is going to be the last one so there's definitely some spattering in the paint um mostly right here and right there uh, i'm not too fond of that but there's not a whole lot i can do about it at this point at least it looks slightly better Whatever. Like I said, this is just a temporary thing. Well, this coat's going on a lot better than the last one was. And there's a chance I'm, I'm putting it on too thick. You know, it says medium coat. It's hard to tell exactly what that means to who wrote the guide instructions. But they did say that the more coats you put on, the easier it is to peel off, which is interesting. So this coat went on significantly better than the last coat and it got rid of those battering spots. I think I think we'll we'll be okay now. All right, we'll come back. I think I think we're done. We'll see how this ends up. I have a little bit left. And if uh you feel like it needs it, I'll give it one last coat. Okay. This is it. Last coat.
That wind is not helping. Feels like it's kind of lean right here, but I know I'm putting plenty on. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call this good enough for a, a temporary job. I mean, whatever, it's plastic dip. Alright. We're gonna let that dry for an hour. Hopefully nothing blows up on it. <laughs> that would suck. Anyhow, it's supposed to be dry to the touch in five minutes. And then, um, what does it say? Allow five minutes between coats, dries to the touch in 30 minutes, can be handled in one hour. Uh, Recoat at any time. Yeah, that's somebody else's problem at this point. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll come back when it's done. We'll be in the garage and, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, review this see how it works okay guys time for the big reveal it's been uh over an hour now and um it's looking okay uh, we'll say it is definitely not perfect there's a couple blemishes in it you can kind of see uh right in line of sight but there are still a few scratch marks from old sanding that took place a long time ago you know those peaks and valleys they're still there but not nearly as bad um, so from 10 foot away I think I think that'll be okay I can deal with that my pride can deal with that for now so uh, anyways guys let me know what you think if you're fans of Plasti Dip let me know in the comments below uh, don't forget to like and Subscribe. I don't care about sharing. If you want to share, that's cool. Um, if you learned something from this video today, let me know. Thanks for watching.